Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to begin the second half of our evening and welcome you to the 13th Annual Game Developers Choice Awards. Please welcome the host of the evening, President and CEO of Double Fine Productions, Tim Schaefer. Hello, everybody. Hi. Wow. This podium is a mess. There are awards everywhere. It's so great to be here tonight. You look amazing. I look amazing. Uh, since the last time I was here, I, I lost my beard. It's somewhere in this room, though, so if you feel something skitter past your feet, something hairy crawling into your lap, that's well, actually, that's probably Gabe Newell. He's so drunk right now. Um, <laughs> but if you feel something warm and tingly, <laughs> if you feel something warm and tingly crawling up your legs, that's probably excitement, because we are about to honor the very best the gaming has to offer. And if you feel maybe goosebumps on your arm, that's probably that combination of fear and hope that comes with being nominated for a, a big award. Or maybe you're just kicking back with a warm, fuzzy feeling in your stomach. And if so, congratulations, that is my beard. Because you probably accidentally ingested it while you're wolfing down hors d'oeuvres in the dark. Sorry, there was no seaweed salad on the menu tonight. But what is on the menu tonight? Excellence. Beauty, art, video games, cryptic and jokes only developers will get. Maybe uh, the F word a couple of times if I know these guys. And a whole lot of awards. Tonight's winners were selected from an open nomination process by 700 of the world's top game creators. A group otherwise known as the International Choice Awards Network. Gark, gark, gark. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really prestigious, isn't it? It's not really, it's just you guys. These are awards by developers, for developers. I even think some of them are made out of old developers. They have that kind of funky smell. If that's true, please keep your trophies out of the sun. They'll burn very easily. So, if you're ready to give out some awards, let me hear a big cheer from all of you. Let's hear it. Yeah. That's great, okay. I like this. I feel good about this. Already off to a smoother start than uh, SimCity. Okay. If you want to have a great gaming experience, you don't need to always pay $60. You don't need to leave your house even. You don't even need to have pants on. You can download some of the best games of last year in the privacy of your own home and have plenty of money left over for pizza and beer and maybe a couple of leftover THQ franchises. So, I, I can make that joke. So, <laughs> let's save some money, take off our pants, and enjoy these nominees for Best Downloadable Game. Best Downloadable Game. The Walking Everybody Dead. Run! Developed and published by Telltale Games. Dan Connors. Kevin Bruner. Kevin Boyle. Trials Evolution. Developed by Red Links. Published by Microsoft Studios. Antti Ilbasilo. Kim Lati. Spelunky. Developed by Derek Ewing. Andy Hall. Published by Microsoft Studios. Derek Ewing. Andy Hall, Eric Serke. Journey, developed by That Game Company. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Journey Team. Mark of the Ninja, developed by Clay Entertainment. Published by Microsoft Studios. Jeff Agawa. Nels Anderson, Jamie Chang. And the choice award for best downloadable game is Journey. about 
love the crowd here, but this is the Journey team. Everybody who worked on Journey yeah. are here. So. <laughs> you want to see them, Jane? Uh, Genova and I weren't sure what to say. Uh, we just wanted to start off and say thank you. Uh, the most important thing for us is to be able to have all of you here to share this award with. You are such an inspiring community. Everyone nominated tonight, so amazing. All of the IGF, all of the games in the main competition. Games are what we do, and we do it because we love it, and we love you. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's time now to talk about the power of narrative. You know, a good story, a great story, can really pull you out of yourself. But so can the monster from Predator. <laughs> Makes you think about these nominees for Best Narrative. Best Narrative. Virtue's Last Reward. Developed by Spike Chunsoft. Published by Axis Games. Kotaro Uchikoshi, Yasu Azuka, Ben Bateman, Nobara Nakayama. The Walking Dead. Developed and published by Telltale Games. Sean Vonneman, Jake Watson, Mark Darren, Gary Witta. Mass Effect 3. Developed by BioWare. Published by Electronic Arts. Mass Effect 3 Development Team. Dishonored. Developed by Arcane Studios. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Harvey Smith. Rafael Colantonio. Austin Grossman. Terry Brosius. Spec Ops The Line. Developed by Jaeger Entertainment. Published by 2K Games. Walt Williams. Richard Piercy. Timo Ullmann. And the choice award for best narrative game goes to... The Walking Dead. Thank you so much. Um, you know, uh, this is all of us, I guess. Um, the story, yeah, the story is uh, this part, and then there's everybody at Telltale who does like everything else. And um, there's like a lot of typos in the script, and um, <laughs> there's some stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, everybody sitting over there, plus everybody at the studio, makes uh, a story real. You guys all know that. So thanks to them. Thanks to Gary for keeping us on the straight and narrow and making the... Whenever there was a chance we weren't going to go down the dark path, Gary made sure that it got all the way there to the point that made us all very uncomfortable. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. What did, oh, sorry. Tonight's first nominee for Game of the Year, Dishonored. Developed by Arcane Studios. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Rafael Colantonio. Harvey Smith. Julian Roby. What is beauty? Should be an easy question, people. You're looking at it, right? Yeah. Thank you. It's true. Well, well said, well said. Um, but what is beauty in a game? Is it the most uh, realistic depiction of a human? Is it some sort of expressive, stylized perspective on reality? Is it, is it polygon count? The answer, um, 
this polygon count. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, great. Now that that is settled, let's check out these nominees for the award for Best Visual Arts. Best Visual Arts. Halo 4. Developed by 343 Industries. Published by Microsoft Studios. Kenneth Scott. Borderlands 2. Developed by Gearbox Software. Published by 2K Games. Brian Martell. Jeremy Cooper. Journey. Developed by That Game Company. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Journey Team. Dishonored. Developed by Arcane Studios. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Victor Antonov. Sebastian Matan. Far Cry 3. Developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Published by Ubisoft. Jean Alexis Doyon. Dan Hay. And the choice award for the best visual arts belongs to Journey. Wow, thank you guys. This is really, really cool. And a big honor because those other games look really freaking cool, man. <laughs> they look really cool. So thanks for coming and thanks for <laughs> coming, Journey Team. <laughs> the end. We're out of here. See you. Uh, so, so that's, that's our, our team, and also uh, John was our graphics engineer, which we consider as very crucial for the look of the game. So, yeah. <laughs>
got a report that you guys may have a gun? Oh, no, 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 no sir. Not at all. Okay, so oh, no. What, what's this? Okay, mister, what's your name? Here tonight to present this year's Ambassador of the Year Award is Mark Delora. Good evening. On January 16, 1938, jazz clarinetist Benny Goodman brought swing music to New York's Carnegie Hall. The idea of Goodman's swing orchestra playing in that most hallowed Amer American concert halls was heretical to some and revolutionary to others. But the seats of Carnegie Hall sold out weeks in advance, and the recording of that concert is a record of one of the landmark moments in the history of jazz, that moment when jazz, now known as America's classical music, gained respect from the music world. On March 16, 2012, an energetic and entrepreneurial technologist brought video games to the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Like Carnegie Hall in the 1930s, the Smithsonian today is a chronicler of art, reflecting what Americans think about and value, and denoting what the art world respects and acknowledges. The exhibit, The Art of Video Games, highlighted 40 years of evolution of the video game industry, covering 80 games on 20 systems, including a handful of interactive, playable kiosks and exhibits, and seemed to answer that interminable question, are games art? Over the exhibit's six-month run at the Smithsonian, more than 685,000 people visited the show. In the run-up to the event itself, 3.7 million people voted on the games that would be seen there. The Art of Video Games exhibit is now traveling to many other museums across the country through at least February 2016. This exhibit at the Smithsonian, like Benny Goodman's concert at Carnegie Hall, signified a moment in time when the world looked at the video game and concluded, it is art. The creation and organization of the Art of Video Games exhibit was spearheaded by one man, an inspiring technologist with an abounding passion for video games and an unrelenting optimism and positive outlook about the art form. He spent many years working at Sun Microsystems, starting out as a sales manager in 1994, working inside the company to expand its awareness of video games and eventually becoming Sun's chief gaming officer. He's been a fixture at GDC for many years and is well known to Java developers for the years he hosted the annual Java One conference. But first and foremost, he's always been an outspoken advocate for the game industry as a whole and a thoughtful and passionate voice emphasizing games as a valuable art and entertainment form, an art form that has a positive impact on people's lives. So to recognize this historic exhibition and the incredible amount of work and passion that went into creating it, Game Developers' Choice Awards would like to welcome to the stage the recipient of this year's Ambassador Award, my good friend, Chris Melisinos. This is awesome. So Mark, thank you. I'm typically not at a loss for words, which is why I'll refer to what I've already written. How about that? So again, thanks, Mark. And like so many of you, um, my road into video games started when I was just a kid, uh, learning to program my own games and being fascinated by the potential that computers had to allow us to type into existence the stories we wanted to tell, create the experiences that no other medium could provide, and proved to be an outlet for self-observation, reflection of the world around us. It was an honor to have been able to build the Art of Video Games exhibition at the Smithsonian American Art Museum and help elevate the conversation of our medium as an important cultural and creative outlet worthy of the title art. But something this big cannot be built alone. To that end, I would like to thank Georgina Goodlander, my colleague at the museum, who helped coordinate the extraordinary amount of work this exhibition demanded. <laughs> to David Gleason, Michael Mansfield, and Dan Sonnet for their help in making this exhibition possible through the careful design and consideration to the materials. To the many members of the museum that supported this effort and made it the success it became, and to the many that donated to the exhibition, I thank you. 
And to my friend Patrick O'Rourke for collaborating on the Art of Video Games book with me, I thank you as well. And thank you to all of the game creators that have provided me with a lifetime of inspiration, and you've had a much larger impact on the world than you may believe. To my wonderful wife of almost 19 years, Michelle, who's watching this at home, I love you. And to my three children, Alexandra, Melina, and Thomas, for the gift of time and understanding that allowed me to create an exhibition that only three years in the making is something that I've waited a lifetime to create. And please know that I will work to continue to elevate the conversation of the importance of video games and help the medium achieve the respect it so richly deserves. Thank you so much for this. The importance of technology to games cannot be overstated. It's more important than life itself. Oh, I think I just overstated it. Well, something you think that cannot be done and then doing it, that is the heart of technology, well represented by tonight's nominees for this technology award. Best technology. Far Cry 3. Developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Published by Ubisoft. Cedric Desire. Assassin's Creed 3. Developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Published by Ubisoft. Mark Anton Lucio. Call of Duty. Black Ops 2. Developed by Treyarch. Published by Activision, Mark Gordon. Planet Side 2. Developed and published by Sony Online Entertainment. Sean Baird, Jay Rhinus, Brad Hines, Ryan Elam. Halo 4. Developed by 343 Industries. Published by Microsoft Studios. David Berger. And the Choice Award for Best Technology goes to Far Cry 3. To all the programmers back at Montreal Massive and, uh, and uh, Shanghai, congratulations for the amazing technology you've made. And most of all, to the entire team, thank you for making some, such good use of it and uh, make it shine. Thank you very much. The second nominee for Game of the Year, Mass Effect 3, developed by BioWare, published by Electronic Arts, Mass Effect 3 Development Team. A game design document is a collection of many things. Some shrewd decisions, a health, uh, some well-reasoned mechanics, and a healthy dose of ridiculous wishing. Ridiculous wishing is not something you should laugh at. Ridiculous wishing is a lot of fun. It's much better than that cheap knockoff ninja wishing. The original is always best, and no one represents originality better than these nominees for best game design. 
best game design. Dishonored. Developed by Arcane Studios. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Rafael Colantonio. Harvey Smith. Mark of the Ninja. Developed by Clay Entertainment. Published by Microsoft Studios. Mills Anderson. Jamie Chang. Spelunky. Developed by Derek Yu. Andy Hull. Published by Microsoft Studios. Derek Yu. Andy Hull. Eric Serke. Journey. Developed by That Game Company. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Journey Team. XCOM Enemy Unknown. Developed by Firaxis Games. Published by 2K Games. Jake Solomon. Garth DeAngelis. Casey O'Toole. Greg Furch. And the award for best game design goes to Journey. First of all, we want to recognize um, one of the game designers who's not here tonight, Brian Singh. Um, big shout out to Brian. Um, I've just been thinking about how nine years ago, Genova and I were at our very first game developers conference. Um, and I think it really changed our life course forever. Um, it's a huge honor in particular to win this award because of that, because this is the community that gave birth to Journey in many ways. Um, we, the, we, everything we know about game design comes from you all. So thank you to everyone who gave their time and to everyone who's here now sharing stories in the hall about how to best make a game and what not to do and giving just five minutes to play test somebody's you know, random game in the hallway and give feedback. It really makes a difference. So thank you so much. I have a personal message to the winner of that award. You don't worry, you still suck. Signed, Richard Garriott. <laughs> that was totally fair. OK. <laughs> now it's time for the best handheld slash mobile category. Not to be confused with the best handheld slash fiction category. As you know, that takes place at another award show this year's <laughs> this year's nominee was another story about Mario and Luigi called My Brother's Plunger, which I'll now read to you in its entirety. Hello! Wait. Best handheld mobile game, Gravity Rush, developed by SCE Japan Studio, published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Kiichiro Toyama. Hero Academy, developed and published by Robot Entertainment. Marcin Shimonsky, David Kubelak, Andrew Olson, Charles Tina. Sorry to keep you waiting. Kid Icarus, Uprising, developed by Sora, published by Nintendo. Masahiro Sukura. <laughs> Sound Shapes, developed by Queasy Games, published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Jonathan Mack, Shaw Han Lin. The Room, developed and published by Fireproof Games, Barry Mead, Rob Dodd, Mark Hamilton. And this year's winner, this year's winner for best handheld mobile game is 
the room. Thank you very much. Um, everything that's happened to us since the rumours released was pretty much a surprise. We totally expected the game would sort of disappear when it came out. Um, and it didn't. Uh, I'd like to dedicate the game though, or sorry, the game, but the award to Mark Hamilton who couldn't be here because his wife had a baby last week and apparently that's an excuse. <laughs> But um, it should be noted that Mark um, designed all the puzzles and did about 60% of the graphics of the game. And he's not here. <laughs> but um, that's for him anyway. But thanks a million. Tonight's third nominee for Game of the Year, The Walking Dead, developed and published by Telltale Games, Dan Connors, Kevin Bruner, Kevin Boyle. I gotta get home and play that right now. I think watching that video, I finally figured out how to save Carly. <laughs> oh, oh, spoilers, it came out last year. Come on. <laughs> Crying out loud. They say that a way to the man's heart is through his stomach, but for that to be true, you'd have to be shooting at him from under his right foot. No matter how you look at it, <laughs> the w best way to a person's brain, the fastest way, is through their ears. Whether you're an assassin, a mind-controlling steady eel larva, or a talented sound engineer and audio designer. For burrowing their way into our ears and making us scream with delight, we honor these nominees for Best Audio. Best Audio. Assassin's Creed 3, developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Published by Ubisoft. Matthew Johnson. Journey, developed by That Game Company, published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Journey Team. Halo 4, developed by 343 Industries, published by Microsoft Studios, Satara Kojima. Hotline Miami, developed by Dalton Games, published by Devolver Digital, team of artists, Jordan Fur. Sound Shapes, developed by Queasy Games, published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Jonathan Mack, Sha Hong Lee. And the best audio award winner is Journey. What makes this award so extra special tonight is that we're all together for the first time in like so long. So I'd like to, to thank and hand over to the guys. First of all, Steve Johnson, lead sound design. Welcome, man. 
So, uh, Austin Wintry, composer, we all know. Monty Mudd, Ted Coker, music implementation, and Martin, audio programmer. I, I'll, I'll let these guys say, uh, say something. I just, when, when we started on Journey, which was four years ago, uh, I remember even right before there was even a functional prototype, I felt like that game company was making the game I had wanted to play my whole life, and I couldn't possibly believe how lucky I was to be able to work on it. And so um, I just want to echo what Kelly said earlier uh, about uh, the things that you guys make, everyone here in this room is, is I think, responsible for it. It, 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 was a, it was a lifetime dream, and to work with these guys and to work with Sony on it was, was something I'll never have words for, so I'll let them say some words. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the people who voted for this, most importantly. Um, I'd like to thank Austin and TGC, and uh, there's probably a lot of people I should thank, but I really want to thank uh, Eric Cook uh, at Sony, a senior producer at Sony, who um, Journey got like a third or fourth extension, which is great for the game, but I was supposed to move on to something else, and he really spoke up for me and made sure that I finished the game. So. I, uh, my part in this, I'd like to dedicate to him, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Presenting the Pioneer of the Year Honor, Associate Professor of Games and Learning at Parsons, the New School for Design, and partner in Local Number 12, John Sharp. Hey everyone. So before there were video games, there was a computer toy. Back in 1962, there was just one of them, a single computer toy known as Space War. Yeah. It's really hard for us to understand the impact Space War had. The state of the art for games back then were pinball machines and board games. And when it came to computers, they took up entire rooms. You loaded software onto them with paper tapes that worked something like film projectors. You wrote code in machine language, and there weren't screens. Sometimes there weren't even keyboards, just rows of switches and knobs. And it was out of this mix that Space War, the first digital video game, emerged out of MIT's AI lab. It's a group of hackers led by a fellow known as Slug. They were particularly intrigued by a new computer on its way to MIT in late 61, Digital Equipment Corporation's PDP-1. And there's one particular feature that caught the computer toy maker's eyes, a display on which they could produce images. Who would have ever thought, images on a computer screen? So Slug and his fellow hackers set about designing the perfect demonstration of this new machine and its screen. And in trying to figure out what to do with the screen, they invented video games in one fell stroke. It was a two-player dogfight set in outer space. It had gravity and hyperspace. And thanks to Slug's friend's friend Peter, a realistic star sky in the background. And the thing is, the game is still fun to play to this day, 51 years later. We... we owe so much to Space War and its band of hackers led by Slug. Most important that the discovery that something amazing can happen when you put computers and screens and games together. So please join me in recognizing Steve Slug Russell as the recipient of the 2013 Pioneer Award. Get up, y'all.
like most computer games, it wasn't a single-handed job. Uh, Peter Sampson, Dan Edwards, and Shag Gretz contributed very important parts of Space War that made it better. And um, the MIT community and the Tech Model Railroad Club provided one of the best testing groups I've ever known about. They were very thorough. Thank you all. I know. I know what you're saying. This award show is off the hook. It's like a freaking Def Leppard concert, right? I'm assuming that you guys still know who Def Leppard is and you still say things like off the hook, right? But it's true, we are very much like Def Leppard up here. We look awesome on stage. We're totally rocking super hard. And during the drum solos, we all have orgies backstage with the groupies. Yeah? yeah? Well, it's not with groupies, it's just the other presenters. And <laughs> it's not actually orgies, we're just playing Magic the Gathering. But instead of drum solos, we have these videos from Mega64. Now loading Hotline Miami. Winning, when you win the award for best debut game, it's a bittersweet moment because it's a great honor, but it's also something you can only win once. You can't have a second debut game and uh, you keep trying and every game you make, you try to recapture that magic, but you really, you know you're moving away from the joy of birth closer and closer to the inevitability of death. <laughs> or worse, insignificance. But on the bright side, your company might go out of business and then you're free to take another run at it. So, let's say good luck to these nominees for this year's best debut game. Best debut. Humble Hearts. Dust and Elysian Tail. Dean Dodrill. Polytron Corporation. Fez. Phil Fish. Renaud Bedard. Fireproof Games, The Room, Barry Mead, Rob Dodd, Mark Hamilton. Subset Games, FTL, Faster Than Mike, Matthew Davis, J. 
Justin Ma. Giant Sparrow. The Unfinished Swan. Ian Dallas. And the Choice Award for Best Debut goes to Subset Games. Well, we need a better logo, I think. Um, <laughs> So this is unexpected. Um, I personally had always used the IGF as like the sort of beacon of something to aspire to in the past two years, and so this is entirely unexpected. Um, and a lot of pressure to keep making good games, I think. <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to take a second to specifically say thank you to my parents and my girlfriend Allison and the rest of my friends and family. I hadn't had a chance yet. It is a time of great innovation in our industry. I remember it seemed like just a couple years ago, it seemed like every game that was announced had a title that ended with two in it, ended with a number two. But this year, we have games that end in three or four. What will the next year bring? Are there even numbers to handle the innovation that's coming? <laughs> yes. Let's see. Let's see how many numbers we find in the titles of the games nominated for this year's Innovation Award. Innovation Award. FTL, Faster Than Light. Developed and published by Subset Games. Matthew Davis, Justin Ma, Ben Prunty, Tom Schubert. Journey, developed by That Game Company. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Journey Team. Mark of the Ninja, developed by Clay Entertainment. Published by Microsoft Studios. Nels Anderson. Aaron Boutsier. Megan Shaw. <coughs> the Unfinished Swan. Developed by Giant Sparrow. Published by Sony Computer Entertainment. Ian Dallas. Zombie U. Developed by Ubisoft Montpellier. Published by Ubisoft, Guillaume Brunier, Florent Sacre, Jean-Philippe Carr, Gabriel Schrager. Huh. No numbers at all. It's like you guys weren't even trying. And the Innovation Award goes to Journey. This is an amazing honor. Thanks so much. <laughs> We're game developers, not speech givers. <laughs> Thanks to the SPUs. <laughs> but, uh, you know, honestly, this is amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, this is great. <laughs> Tonight's fourth nominee for Game of the Year, XCOM 
Enemy Unknown. Developed by Fraxis Games. Published by 2K Games. Jake Solomon. Garth DeAngelis. Casey O'Toole. Greg Furch. Sarah McLaughlin's biggest fan. I currently manage a GameStop in Pomona, and I used to work at Blockbuster. And if things keep going the way they're going, GameStop is going to become a new company that used to be so awesome, but now it's so irrelevant that you avoid it at all costs. Could you deal with that happening? No. Like you two guys were sisters. Millions of games not worth paying the creators for. GameStop, power to the players. <clears throat> the time has come for the audience award, and I just want you people to know that I nominated for you guys for this award. Because if you're going to give an award to an audience, I think we should give it to the best audience, the smartest audience, the sexiest audience we've ever had in this room. Right? But uh, apparently, I don't get to vote. This award is chosen by some jerks called the audience. Hmm. Well, let's see who they picked. I get to open this one right now. This year's audience award goes to Dishonored. Thank you, audience. Uh, this is, uh, well, you know, the audience matters very much, so uh, it's uh, very, uh, it's, touch it's touching uh, us very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, guys, you uh, have no idea how much we appreciate this. Um, we're a group of developers who love what we do so much. Uh, we are so dedicated to the type of game that we want to make, these rich, uh, immersive worlds where the player is still in control, where there are systems that react to the player's agency, where the player can play creatively, improvisationally, where it's not just a trail of breadcrumbs with some scripted Jerry Brookheimer scenes between them. We really believe in what we do, and we love all of you, and all the games nominated tonight are so special to us. We played the hell out of Journey. FTL took over our office like a virus. This was an amazing year for games. Thank you to the audience. Thank you, all of you, on behalf of Arcane Studios. And now, our fifth and final nominee for Game of the Year, Journey, developed by That Game Company, published by Sony Computer Entertainment, Journey Team. Although we work in a large industry, we're often reminded just how small it is, very often. 
no more so than when we lose one of our close friends or colleagues. We'd like to take now this moment to remember some of the amazing people we lost last year and their unforgettable impact on our industry, our art, and our lives. Here tonight to present tonight's Lifetime Achievement Award is a man who has been widely praised as an early champion of online distribution, a passionate crusader for game quality, but most of all is the man who signed Brutal Legend at EA. Please give a warm welcome, uh, maybe a job if you have one, to John Riccatello. So uh, thanks, Tim. I've always loved your games. Grim Fandango or Psychonauts, Brutal Legend. Preparing for tonight, I spent a lot of time trying to think through the thread that defines these games is so perfectly Tim Schafer. I couldn't come up with it. And then I remembered a day several years ago, Tim and I were drinking tequila shots, and it hit me. Tim creates games much like he drinks, with pure gusto, energy, and complete abandon. Now tonight we're here to honor Ray and Greg. When I agreed to speak tonight, I had just been listed in a bunch of magazines as being among the most powerful people in games, entertainment, and sports. I had a staff that was gonna create a whiz-bang video presentation so we could best honor legendary Ray Muzika and Greg Zeschuk. But circumstances have changed, and like Ray and Greg, I'm now an unemployed ex-game guy, and I have no staff to make that video. So it's sort of JR unplugged. No slides, just a few words and a mic. I thought about it, and this is very appropriate, because I'd much rather speak from the heart about my two incredible friends than put up a presentation designed to make me look smart. Tonight we're here for Ray and Greg. I first got to know them about a decade ago, and before that, I knew them through their great work. They, they founded a company that created some of the most important, groundbreaking games in the history of our industry. Before I actually met them, I was certain that these creators of Baldur's Gate and KOTOR were passionate and great with a huge love of the craft of making great games. And I don't always associated the word craft with game makers, but with Ray and Greg, the word just fits. Now, you've heard of their history, um, ER doctors, MBAs, uh, bored or curious. Um, their first title was Gastrointestinal Patient Simulator, really. Now, they must have liked writing code because a short while later, in 1995, they founded BioWare. And from there, they began the story that is now legendary. Rather than go into the ins and outs of their story, I decided to distill their history into an idea. Idea to describe what they're really about, what makes Greg and Ray different from the rest of the game developers out there, or most of the rest of the game developers out there. I didn't have to think long about it. I think it's pretty simple. They have a passion to create truly, truly great games. And then they did something that is offset, but rarely practiced. They recruit awesome people and treat them with trust, huge support, and integrity. It's a pretty darn simple formula. 
and from it, incredible games were created. The trick is, in order to live it, you have to believe it. And you have to be awfully darn special to live it every day for 6,000 consecutive days without ever losing the thread or letting a ship date pressure or ego get in the way. Way and Greg are that special and have done just that. And they've created a body of work that is a result of their passion and belief that will be remembered for a very, very, very long time. It's my great honor to introduce you the IGDA Lifetime Achievement Awards, Ray Muzika and Greg Zeschuk. Thank you, John. Uh, you've, been a, you've been a friend and a mentor for, for years, many, many years, and it means a lot. It's a, it's a huge honor for us to get this award. It means a lot for you to be here and to, to give it to us, frankly. And we're, we're humbled to receive this award from all of you, our peers at GDC. And there, there is no bigger honor than that. And, you know, this is, this is incredible. Um, uh, totally unexpected and, 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 and very much appreciated. And we want to thank a number of groups of people who have helped us immensely. And since we're receiving this award jointly, we're also going to divide up the thanks. And these thanks are sincere and deep from, from both of us, from our hearts. Uh, first, we want to thank our families. Our wonderful wives, Leona and Nirmal, are both here, along with Greg's children, Valen and Isha. And our families have been incredible sources of love and support for us both over the years. And so, thank you. We love you. Our parents helped support and shape us, both of us, tremendously. Both Greg's and my parents were teachers, and from them we gained a deep appreciation of, of humility and lifelong learning. So thank you very much. We, we really appreciate everything you've done for us. Third, thanks to our passionate, hardworking teams at BioWare, we, we th honestly think of all of you like our extended families. It's, it's sincere. And you made the journey fun, and your commitment to quality will always be truly inspiring to us. And we can't wait to see where you're going to go next, and we're eagerly awaiting your next release as fans ourselves. So thank you. So when I first heard about the award, I thought I had finally scored that nomination for best facial hair in the games business. Um, but you know, it was something much more important than that, more seriously. This is a really amazing achievement. Um, you know, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's, it's just... It, <laughs> but you know, I mean, like, like I think for, for us, I know I've had some very special experiences here at GDC and the awards. It's always been amazing to come up here and get nominations and awards from your peers. There's nothing, nothing better. Honestly, this is the most amazing times we've had to have been here before. Um, I want to thank the fans. I mean, it's interesting. We've had our times. You know, we've had some discussions and on the internet and stuff. But uh, you know, the reality is, I think we we understand where what people are feeling. I mean, the passion for gaming, the passion for our games, and the games other folks create drive a lot of what's said and and what people what people feel. So, really appreciate uh, the fans. I mean, they've supported us so much over the years. Uh, I want to thank John again, a great friend and a mentor. I mean, a amazing speech thank you and uh, Ray you know he's I couldn't ask for a better partner business partner he, we always clarify that over the years just to be really clear uh, <laughs> and and you know he, he's been a, he's been an awesome dude to work with for nearly 20 years I mean, pretty well 20 years we've been working together uh, probably spent more time together than with our wives uh, it's true um, a lot of, lot of partners supported us over the years. I mean, we never did it by ourselves. Not only did we have our teams, but we had a lot of publishing partners. Interplay, Black Isle, Infogram, Atari, Microsoft, Sega, LucasArts, and EA. And you know, we're also blessed with an incredible number of friends in the industry. It's, 
it's uh, amazing coming back here and just seeing them everywhere as we uh, walk around and see folks. And really, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, Ray and I have moved on to new things. It's, it's kind of a scary, exciting, I think we're trying to cover new ground. I'm working on something called the Beer Diaries. Ray has a, formed an investment group called Threshold Impact. Um, you know, we, we both had incredible passion for gaming and, and still do love it, but I think we felt it was time for us to try something different. Um, and, you know, really, you know, Bioware is a company that we love and we love the people running it. So many of our friends are there. We, we actually, I think it, more so than anything, we uh, have a very soft spot in our hearts for the folks that work there because we, you know, some of them helped them grow up all the way and now they've taken over and it's a wonderful thing to see. And finally, the industry, you know, it's, it's a kind of amazing times right now. Lots of, lots of craziness, but at the end of the day, I mean, so much passion, enthusiasm, creativity, you know, in this very room, you know, clearly it's in great hands. So, thank you, really appreciate the award. It's an incredible, you know, just thank you so much, and thanks. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Ray. This is it, the big one, Game of the Year. Are you excited? <laughs> Who's excited? Who's nervous? Who just wants to get out of here and go to the Valve party? Okay. <laughs> then, let's take one last look at all the nominees. Game of the Year. Dishonored. Mass Effect 3 The Walking Dead XCOM Enemy Unknown Journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 winner of the GC Choice Game of the Year Award is... Journey. I think I'm finally ready to say something. Uh, uh, I have so many things to thank. Um, first, I want to thank my parents who, you know, without them, I, would, I wouldn't be, you know, on my journey from China to here to study at one of the best gaming schools, you know, in the States. And, uh, and thanks to the people, to my mentor, Tracy Fullerton, and everybody at USC uh, Interactive Media, you know, that they, they helped me to realize um, my life calling, which is to use game as, uh, as a voice to make other people's life better. Um, and on its way, you know, I run into so many people, you know, and everybody I worked with, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, I happen to read Joseph Campbell's work about the hero's journey. I, I think, you know, the success of journey really is because we are standing on the shoulder of the giants. Um, journey is, uh, you know, the hero's journey is about the transformation of life. Um, initially, I thought we are making a game, you know, about this character um, growing up and 
you know, going through his life and, and reach, you know, the end of his life and transcendence. But I realized that particular cycle is in everywhere. Uh, it is in the development of a journey. And if you've played the game, you could imagine how difficult it is for the team to go through it, um, and particularly in the mountain, you know, right before the end. Um, it was very, very stressful. I actually had to go to see psychiatrists, you know. I was told to work out, you know, because I, I was not able to handle it. Um, but I, I want to thank for the fans, uh, for the players who supported us, you know, ever since the original game Cloud, Flow, and Flower. And it was the letter they sent us that really kind of convinced me that it's worth it, it's, it's meaningful to do it, to, to, to make these games, to, to start a company, and, and to continue struggle till the end. And at the end of the journey, um, you know, many of us have you know, stepped onto a new, new, their new journey, but I think all of us have reached the transcendence and learned something. Um, and in the end, thank you so much for everybody who voted for the game. Um, it, thank you very much. Congratulations, congratulations to all the winners and all the nominees tonight. Let's have a big hand for Megan and Simon and Andy and everyone who helps put together this amazing show year after year. And a special hand just for the CAs out there in the red shirts. This is here for the CAs, yeah. Woo! And thanks to all of you for coming out here tonight. If you just stick around through the credits, I have just one more thing I hope you'll enjoy. Uh, I hope. Um, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but a little while back we did a Kickstarter project. A game and a documentary. Yeah. And we usually, we just keep this stuff just for our backers. By the way, is there, are there backers here in the audience tonight? Any backers? Yes! Please raise your hand if you're a backer. Thank you for backing. And now please put your hand in front of the eyes of the non-backer seated next to you for what we're about to show. Please enjoy.